last cup of coffee, we had something that's a really interesting, or I thought it was very interesting. And this is about the Great Airship Scare. And this was around 1896. There were actually, it's from like 1882 into the 1890s. And you don't... Vintage don't, UFO sightings. It is vintage UFO, but it's also very... Oh, I'm sorry, antique. Very steampunk. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was during that era, I mean, wasn't it? It's, yeah, it's just, it's interesting. And I, I love steampunk. When, when I read these things, there's really no way to shorten it because a lot of it is what important. was written in the newspaper. It's important information. It is important information. And this comes from Mysterious Universe and by Brent Swanser again. Brent needs some love. A lot of times nobody has commented on his articles and stuff. So you all go over there to Mysterious Universe and give him some love. Yeah. Because everybody needs encouragement. <clears throat> Absolutely, they do. Yeah. So it says the UFO phenomenon and its alien abduction cases go way back. In the late 1800s, pardon me, a strange series of events would begin to play out across the skies of the United States in such far-flung places as Texas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Missouri, California, and Arizona. People were seeing bizarre airships of some sort, usually described as massive, anywhere between 30 to 200 feet long and moving at speeds of roughly 135 to 150 miles per hour. Ew. That's, yeah. That's impressive. That's like a torpedo, a massive torpedo. Yeah. Far beyond the dimensions and capabilities of anything at the time. One of the first sightings of these mysterious ships had been a mass sighting in November of 1896 at uh, Sacro Sacramento, California, with hundreds of witnesses describing a giant cigar-shaped body with wheels at the sides, some calling it an electric arc lamp propelled by some mysterious force. An electric arc lamp? Well, that's, again, this is 1800s. Is that like the Faraday lamps? Or I, I don't lamp? know. I think that, well, they talked, po you know, totally different than we do now. So, you know, it's okay. a matter of translation. Right. Okay, and had two human-looking figures seated upon an apparatus. All right, sightings would pour in after this, moving steadily eastward as far as Chicago, and it would reach peak weirdness with an alleged attempted alien abduction by the pilots of these mysterious vessels. From between November 1896 and April 1897, there were thousands of reports from across a vast, er vast area of 18 states and these strange cigar-shaped airships that resembled a flying dirigible of some sort, in some cases described as having revolving wheels, rudders, motors, sails, and a powerful beam they could project in front of them or towards the ground. In some cases, the pilots of the vessels were seen and even heard talking, although it could never be made out what they were actually saying. All right, some airships were described as having wings, others with propellers, and some say there was no noticeable form of propulsion at all. Strange, intricate machinery and contraptions were often mentioned, and all of them were completely bizarre things that no one had ever seen before and served to sow fear in the regions where they appeared. People were truly baffled because this was an era when airships and blimps were still very rudimentary and primitive, and the Wright brothers were years away from their flight at Kitty Hawk. One report printed in Quincy Morning Whig of April 1897... Quincy. Des Quincy. Quincy. Yes. Described a sighting... Described a sighting. And it's like, I, steampunk. What steampunk movies keep coming to mind? Was Sucker Punch a steampunk or was that not? Sort of. Yeah, it was sort of steampunkish. And I'm trying to think. It's been a while since I've watched Sucker Punch. I love I that movie. I think it though. had steampunk essence it to did. it. It did. With the action scenes, yes, it had steampunk essence within it. But for the most of it, like the normal world's parts, it wasn't very steampunk esque. I don't know, but that. have we watched any steampunk esque <clears throat> movies? 
Yes, but I can't remember the name I of it. I can't either. Now, we, have, we, we are very much, uh, we like steampunk. We steampunk steam is, is some cool stuff. I love steampunk, cyber goth. Yeah. Bubble goth. Not bubble goth. Pastel goth. No, no, no. That's no, that's the Hello Kitty version of goth. I love Anyhow. This goth goth. I no, mean. no. All right. This Brave was goth. And, and a wig for those of you all who don't know. I know that was a political party at one time. A wig? Wig. Wig. W H I G. Wigs. Okay. So it's not like, it's like those things are. Whip. are <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's not like political parties haven't changed names over the years. It's like exactly like saying whip. Yes, I can't whip. remember. There were some other ones that were quite interesting back in the day. Anyhow, from this Quincy Morning Whig, it states Whig. at times it did not appear to be more than four hundred to five hundred feet above the ground. Well, that's still a pretty good distance there. I mean, yeah. Men who saw the thing described it as a long, slender body shaped like a cigar and made of some bright metal. On either side of the hull extended outwards and upwards were what appeared to be wings. At the front end of the thing was a headlight similar to the searchlights used on steamboats. Now, remember, this is before the automobile. Right. So, headlights had not even been dreamt of yet. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I remember when, I'm trying to remember when Ford invented, invented the Model T, but I don't, that's escaping me right now. I, I don't remember that, honestly. I, I, I used to know that, but I don't anymore. Yeah. As all of this was going on, there was plenty of speculation as to what was going on, ranging from the rational to the outlandish. Meteorites, Venus or other planets, stars, kites, Floating Chinese lanterns, birds, and atmospheric phenomena were all mentioned, as were pranksters and the idea that there uh, may have been some mad inventor at work designing advanced flying machines. Uh, so, in other words, it was the same rationales as people who have UFO sightings today. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was a weather balloon. Okay. Were weather balloons a thing back? Yeah, they were. Oh, yeah, they? weather balloons. Are, they still a thing. It says it got to the point that even famous inventor Thomas Edison was questioned on his possible involvement, to which he laughed and said, I prefer to devote my time to objects uh, which have some commercial value. <laughs> and the, the theft from Tesla comes <laughs> yeah. to mind constantly. Very much so. Uh, Edison also stated at best airships would only be toys. Uh, another idea was that they were aliens, and Martians were what people called them at the time. And there was at least one bizarre report that would suggest this was the case. Yeah. Okay, what was the report? What was All the bizarre right. encounter? I'm getting to that. I had to take a drag off a cigarette now. I want to know. All right, the very strange account was given in 1896 when a Colonel H.G. Shaw was traveling with a companion by the name of Camille Spooner in a horse and carriage in Lodi, California, when the horse stopped in abject terror and refused to continue on. In a report on the incident in the Stockton Evening Mail on November 25, 1896, Shaw would say what happened next. And I quote, Looking up, we beheld three strange beings. They resembled humans in many respects, but still they were not like anything I have ever seen. They were nearly or quite seven feet high and very slender. We slender were, man? Possibly. We Does were it both have tentacle arms? No, no tentacles. Tentacle sama? No tentacles. We were both somewhat startled, as you can readily imagine. And the first impulse was to drive on. The horse, however, refused to budge. And when we saw that we were being regarded more with an air of curiosity than anything else, we concluded to get out and investigate. Well, that was brave. Of course, yeah. if the horse wouldn't move, I mean, what was they supposed to do? I guess they could have run out. They could have just stayed there. Run around in circles and scream. Yeah. They could have uh, stuck their heads in the sand. You really? I walked up to where the strange-looking persons were and addressed them. I asked them where they were from. They seemed not to understand me, but began, well, no. warbling expresses it better than talking. The <laughs> remarks, if uh, such you would call them, were addressed to each other and sounded like a monotonous chant, 
inc uh, inclined to be guttural. I saw it was no use to attempt a conversation, so I satisfied myself with watching and examining them. They seemed to take great interest in ourselves, the horse and buggy, and scrutinizing everything very carefully. Shaw continues, while they were thus engaged, I was enabled to inspect them as well. As I have already stated, they were seven feet in height and very slender. I noticed further that their hands were quite small and delicate, and that their fingers were without nails. Their feet, however, were nearly twice as long as the, of those as ordinary men, uh, though they were narrow, and the toes were also long and slender. I noticed, too, that they were able to use their feet and toes much the same as a monkey. In fact, they appeared to have much better use of their feet than their hands. I presently discovered that this was probably a provision of nature. Nature where? Super, like... Extraterrestrial nature, like nature uh, on uh, Mars, Jupiter, Uranus? Apparently. As one of them came close to me, I reached out to touch him and placed my hand under his elbow, pressed gently upward, and lo and behold, I lifted him from the ground with scarcely an effort. I should, should judge that the specific gravity of the creature was less than an ounce. It was then that I observed him try to grasp the earth with his toes to prevent my lifting him. You can readily understand that their slight weight had made such a provision necessary, or they might be blown away. Well, they could just poof them then. They could just it's poof. Just one strong gust of wind. Yeah. There you go. Okay, Shaw goes on and he says, uh, They were without any sort of clothing, but were covered with a natural growth hard to describe. It was not hair, nor was it like feathers, but it was as soft as silk to the touch, and their skin was like velvet. Their faces and heads were without hair, the ears were very small, and the nose had the appearance of polished ivory, while the eyes were large so what and the, lustrous. The rock heads? Just the nose. The <laughs> mouth, however, was small, and it seemed to me that they were without teeth. That and other things led me to believe that they neither ate nor drank, and the life was sustained by some sort of gas. Each of them had swung under the left arm a bag to which attached a nozzle, and every little uh, little while, one or the other would place the nozzle on his mouth, by which time I heard the sound of escaping gas. They were balloon people. <laughs> they have balloon heads. Wasn't there a SpongeBob where they went to Balloon World? No, they didn't go to Balloon World. But... Wasn't that SpongeBob? Somebody went to Balloon World in a cartoon. Uh, there was an episode where Spongebob had a balloon made of chocolate for Patrick. There was an episode where they sort of blew their heads up like balloons. Sort no, of. I'm telling you, it was the balloon uh, world. It was balloon world. I don't think that was Spongebob, but I could be wrong. If we find that it was Spongebob, we'll include look it, it in the description. Twitter. Okay, and it was much the same sound as was produced by a person blowing up a football. Now think of this, that was back when they actually inflated footballs without, without a pump. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. From the description I give, I do not want you to get the idea that these creatures were hideous. In appearance, they were markedly the contrary. They were possessed of a strange and indescribable beauty. I can exp express myself in no other way. They were graceful to a degree and more uh, divinely beautiful than anything I ever beheld. That's that's the balloon SpongeBob. We'll look for it and put it in the description. Box. I literally looked up balloon SpongeBob well, balloon world. It was somewhere there was balloon world. Shaw also made mention of very strange tools the creatures held, the size of a hen's egg, uh, which could project the most remarkable, intense, and penetrating light one can imagine. The mysterious beings apparently examined the horse and buggy with great interest, but this was apparently only the beginning of the weirdness and it would soon escalate into what seems to have been a very early account of alien abduction. Shaw would say in the newspaper account of this, quote, Finally, they became tired of examining us and our horse and buggy, and then one of them, at the sing signal of one who appeared to be the leader, attempted to lift me, probably with the intention of carrying me away. Although I'm, I made not the slightest resistance, he, he could not move stuff. me. And finally, the three of them tried it without the slightest success. Now, remember, this was the... He was able to pick that one up just by putting touch in his elbows. <coughs> beam me up, Scotty. So they... Well, apparently, they didn't have tractor beams back then. 
They have, well, I don't know. They appear to have no muscular power outside of being able to move their own limbs. Well, after trying in vain to move either of us, they turned in the direction of Woodbridge Canal, uh, near which we were, and as they flashed their lights towards the bridge, we beheld a startling sight. There, resting in the air about 20 foot above the water, was an immense airship. It was 150 feet in length at least, though probably not over 20 feet in diameter at the widest part. It was pointed at both ends, and outside of a was a large rudder, uh, and there was no visible machinery. The three walked rapidly towards the ship, not as you or I walk, but with a swaying motion, their feet only touching the ground at intervals of about 15 feet. We followed them as rapidly as possible and reached the bridge as they were about to embark. With a little spring, they rose to the machine, opened a door in the side, and disappeared within. I do not know of what the affair was built, but just before it started, I struck it with a rock, and it gave no sound. It went through the air very rapidly and expanded and contracted with a muscular motion and was soon out of sight. I have a theory, which of course is only a theory, that those we beheld were inhabitants of Mars who have been sent to Earth for the purpose of securing one of its inhabitants. And if, the, if he didn't see that, he's one hell of a storyteller. Yeah. Because that was rather incredible. And let's see. All this was gone into what was called the Great Airship Mystery of 1896 to 97, and would continue after this, but there were no further attempted abduction accounts not even uh, any detailed descriptions of the shadowy figures often reportedly standing atop them. And it has been written off as the product of some sort of collective delusion or mass hysteria. Where have we heard that recently? All over the world. Uh-huh. In fact, we talked about mass hysteria at one point. Frequently. From Wikipedia, they talk about uh, the mystery airship. And it says, mystery airships or phantom airships are a class of unidentified flying objects best known from a series of newspaper reports originating in the western United States and spreading east during late uh, 1896 and early uh, 1897. According to researcher Jerome Clark, airship sightings were reported worldwide during the 1880s and 1890s. Mystery airship reports are seen as a cultural predecessor to modern claims of extraterrestrial piloted flying saucer-style UFOs. <coughs> I don't know what... What does that mean, cultural predecessor? I don't know. Is I, that like ancestors or something? No, I, I don't know. I, I don't even understand that, and I don't even want to go there. Typical airship reports involved nighttime sightings of unidentified lights, but more detailed accounts reported ships compared to a dirge, uh, dirigible. It's a blimp. It was a blimp. Funeral dirge. No, no. Reports of the alleged crewmen and pilots usually describe them as human-looking, although sometimes the crew claimed to be from Mars. Uh, it was popularly believed that the mystery airships were the product of some inventor or genius who was not ready to make knowledge of his creation public. For example, Thomas Edison was so widely speculated to be the mind behind the alleged airships that in 1897 he was forced to issue a strongly worded statement denying his responsibility. <laughs> now, strongly worded. Now, what we read was not strongly worded, no. so apparently there was something else. He must have censored it or something for public display. I don't know. And it says, it has been frequently argued that the mystery airships are unlikely to represent test flights of real human manufactured dirigibles, as no record of successful, sustained, or long-range airship flights were known from the period, and it would have been impossible not to mention irrational, uh, irrational to keep such a thing a secret. Uh, to the contrary, however... There were, in fact, several functional airships manufactured before 1896-97, uh, and they said that Solomon Andrews made successful test flights with his Arion in 1863, but their capabilities were far more limited than the mystery airships. And they have noted that contemporary American newspapers of the yellow journalism variety 
something like the Weekly World News. Oh my God, I miss the Weekly World News. I think it's still... No, it's not a thing anymore. We're more likely to print oh, manufactured God. stories and hoaxes than our, mar than our modern news sources. What? I thought that was funny. Yeah. Like our, like our modern news sources don't manufacture stories and hoaxes. A little bit of irony there. Uh-huh. Just a little bit. Uh, Milo's out again. I see that. Um... And it said that most journalists of the period did not seem to take the airship's reports very seriously uh, after the major 1996-97 wave concluded, and the subject fell quickly from public consciousness. The airship stories received further attention only after the 1896-97 newspaper reports were largely rediscovered in the mid-1960s, and UFO investigators suggested the airships might represent early precursors to post-World War II UFO sightings. So, we have to wonder. Yeah. But it's one of those, we don't know what types of people be visiting when. We got all sorts of stuff visiting mm -hmm. here and there. We just can't see it a lot of the time. That's the thing. Now this this last one was is amazing because uh -huh. this is from is this is by Mike Kingston of the Texas Almanac and this is written in a way that only a Texan could write. Okay, I'm intrigued. I, yeah, it was pretty cool. And it says between April 13th and 17th of 1897, there were 38 reported sightings of airships in 23 county, counties mostly in north-central Texas. And let's see here. It says that um, the light is fading, so I've got to find where my highlighter is. Descriptions <laughs> of the airships varied somewhat, that there, but there was a general consensus that they had cigar-shaped bodies or cabins 50 to 60 feet long with propellers at each end, large bat-like wings, and huge floodlights uh, fore and aft. Most witnesses saw neither pilot nor crew, but in some cases, not only did observers see people manning the ships, but talked to them. The Dallas Morning News correspondent at Waxahachie, if, I'm, if I've mispronounced that, that I am sorry, reported a long conversation between Judge Love of the community and an airship crew which claimed to be from the North Pole. Santa Claus is up there. He's an alien! <laughs> no, Santa, Santa Claus is steampunk. Are you sure? I think that would be cool if Santa Claus was steampunk. You set yourself on fire. No, not totally. It was just a sander. At Greenville, uh, correspondent C.G. Williams reported the leader of the ship's crew was from a little town in the interior of New York. The airship was being test flown across the country. Its invent inventor implored Williams, don't give this thing away. We are experimenting with this vessel. So far, it's a success. I believe the Santa Claus one better than I believe that one. Yeah. A report from Waxahachie, you know, they made me say it twice, <laughs> held that the machine was being operated by a woman, and the observer thought, quote, his satanic majesty, or Beelzebub, had something to do with this traveler in the lower stratum of ether, end quote. In Farmsville, an eyewitness saw three men in the cabin and heard them singing, Nearer my God to thee. The trio reportedly were also passing out temperance tracks. Uh, As might be expected, not all North Texans were convinced of the authenticity of the reports. I don't know that I've ever heard of aliens singing Nearer my God to thee. I've never heard of that. No. In Ennis, Dr. E. Stewart an acknowledged authority in metaphysics, passed off the reporting sightings as due to hypnotism and bad whiskey. Mm. When bad whiskey. When drinking moonshine. When questioned about the feasibility of man flight, one aeronautical authority in Dallas was asked if he had seen the ship. I have not, he asserted. I don't drink and I never come downtown after dark. There was speculation from several sources that the sightings were the first in a series of events heralding the final days of Earth as prophesied in the Bible. Of course, Texans always have to one-up each other, and the airship craze 
provided a perfect setting. In Hill County, two farmers near Abbott did not see an airship, but they did witness a man and six boys float from out, uh, from out of the sky. They drifted down as easily and gracefully as birds alighting within a few feet of the ground. Mm -hmm. About 50 yards from us, and they remained stationary a few seconds and reascended into the heavens out of sight, came the report. Well, now, we, we just said as far as flying humanoids. Yeah. So we don't know what of these is accurate and what is the, of these is not. What if they just have the inflatable suits? Like all of them. I don't know. On April the Dune. 9th, S.E. Hayden, a correspondent for the news, reported that an airship had struck a windmill in Aurora in Wise County and exploded. The body of a small man, identified by a local authority as a Martian, was recovered from the wreckage and buried. Pieces of the ship were collected for display and sale and attracted many uh, spectators. And it says that, you know, the Aurora incident, labeled a hoax by 20th century historians, is the most celebrated of the encounters with the airships in uh in Texas, researchers of unidentified flying objects have spent a great deal of time attempt attempting to verify the presence of the airship, to, uh, to find the remains of the craft, and to locate the body of the supposedly alien pilot. So, yeah, there you go. Hmm. Okay. Now, some of those things we have accounts and reports of today. Not the dirigibles or blimps. Yeah. That's well, why they call them blimps is because well, dirigible is a very cumbersome word. Well, I've heard some people describe the UFOs as blimp-like Well, things. it could be, you know, you've got these cigar-shaped craft that are commonly reported today. Yeah. And even as far as the flying humanoids. I mean, there's been, uh, I don't know how credible the footage is, the footage of uh, those flying humanoid shapes or the floating ones. Right. So we don't know that there were not actual accounts mixed in with, you know, general hoaxes and fuckery. General fuckery. That's what I think. But now I will tell you something. The one dude, and I took my glasses off and can't see what his name was. <laughs> Do you want me to read it? Uh, no. Okay. I'll find it here. Hang on just a minute. Uh, I have to have my glasses on all the time. Well, you line. know, how that, how that goes. But the one whose longest account was Shaw. Like I said, if he didn't actually have that experience, he's one hell of a storyteller. Oh, absolutely he is. Like, that's and really, he that's was, actually really well written. It was very well written. He apparently was a very well-spoken individual. And are those types necessarily that prone to making claims of, of that variety, knowing that they're going to have the scrutiny and stuff? Yeah. We don't, I don't know if they... I mean, like, talking about that sort of thing does put your reputation on the line. Oh, yeah. So, why would they just do that knowing? No. At, during that time, I'm trying to remember when P.T. Barnum like, was. But, you know, you could see P.T. Barnum doing something like that. But he wasn't involved in it. I don't know that he's had any alien things. I don't know. But now, as far as the Fiji mermaid, it's not that there have not been a tremendous amount of hoaxes over the years. You can go to Ripley's and look at the Fiji mermaid. Those are hoaxes. Yeah, I think the Fiji, Fiji mermaids are pretty cool, but... I, I like them a lot. I actually want one. No. I like taxidermy. Well, I could I make understand. one. Well, yeah. No, yes. I don't know that you could. How would you get as far as monkey corpse? I think those are kind of Halloween. illegal. Halloween. Well, you could do and that. And Target sells little skeletons. It doesn't have to be of a monkey. It well, that's true. Human. That's true. You could very easily piece together, you know, some paper mache, and you know. Well, yeah. There you go. BG Mermaid. Well, that's that's true. <coughs> now, <coughs> if you can do a dirigible, <coughs> I actually have a monkey skeleton in there. Not a real one. Right. The one from Halloween. Okay. And so I could just, you know, get a fish. And, and do him Steve Punk style? Yeah. I think there are some actual Halloween decorations where there are mermaids. Mermaid skeletons. You know what? I think you're right. Yeah. So we wouldn't even have to. They've already done it. Yeah. 
if they still have them, if they have them this year, I may get one and make a Fiji mermaid just so I could say, hey, I have a Fiji mermaid. That would be cool. That's right? better than the shrunken head. And I'm like, I he's, disagree. Wanted, he's wanted one for years. And I'm like, no, that's somebody's face. I love shrunken heads. You I love shrunken heads. You can't have that in the house. If anyone has like a replica shrunken head, I will gladly take it off your hands. Send me shrunken heads. So let us know what you think about steampunk, the airship scare of 1896, any of that stuff. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. I hadn't heard of that before, and, and like I said, I thought that the article was very well written. and I thought it was, too. Yeah. Uh, so cool And if stuff. that man hasn't wrote books before, dang, he should. Yeah. Well, you know, he's dead now. Oh. He's not going to be writing much. It was in 1896, honey. Well, if he didn't write them, This is he 2021. He should have. So, That's what I meant to say. He should have yeah, wrote okay. books. Wait, 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 he, they didn't mention him being an author or anything, but... I'm sure that he had a long and prosperous life, and I hope he did. He worked at a printing press. How how prosperous could he be? I don't know that it said that about Shaw. You making stuff up? You're one of those. You're did a disinformation. If he wrote that, didn't no. he work at a printing press? No, then? he was Wasn't just he a reporter. No, they it was a reporter that interviewed the man. Oh well, then never mind. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know where he gets some of this stuff. Anyhow, if you have had experiences with airships, UFOs, aliens, if you've had aliens. encounters with paranormal or supernatural, cryptids such as Bigfoot, um, Big Feet, what are, the Wendigo, we're still waiting on the Wendigo story. I was actually doing research on that earlier. Okay. There's actually a difference between Wendigos and Skinwalkers, I found out. Okay, well, he's, he's working on it, he's working on it. So, if you've got uh, local legends, family legends, encounters like that, send us an email at Cup of Coffee with Scream. And the email address is always in the description box. And yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. Go out and be steampunk today. Yeah. And you'll have a beautiful, blessed day. Bye. Shrunken Heads. Give me Shrunken Heads. <laughs>